So let's start our class for today. Open the same question. So open the same question which we did in the last class and uh, the instruction screen, I would uh, get the screen to go down again and again because uh, we started a question and uh, completed one part of it. And now we will be moving towards the other remaining parts of it, okay? Okay, so after the instruction screen, which was uh, just allowed to pass, remember that uh, we were doing this question called uh, Zichi Company, which had uh, five exhibits, and these were the requirements. So I will go back to the requirements later. Now I will quickly review this because I hope you remember the question from yesterday. So the question stated that uh, Zichi company is a large listed engineering company. Okay. Zichi company is a large listed engineering company involved in the development and manufacture of environmental friendly products for businesses worldwide. So it was basically a listed engineering company and this engineering company used to manufacture and develop uh, environmentally for friendly products for businesses worldwide. Okay. Okay, let's Okay, so Zichi company is a large listed engineering company involved in the development and manufacture of environmental friendly products. Until few years, value of shares were rising, remember? 
and uh, it regularly outperformed its main rivals, but the shares were underperforming. Many financial analysts' shares should be sold. Investors are becoming concerned, and this is due to three policy failures. Remember, no post-completion audit using fixed discounted of 10% and uh, always using equity finance. These were the three policy failures of this company, if you remember from the last session, okay? Then there was exhibit two. It is considering a new project to manufacture environmental friendly motor scooters, which are carbon neutral. This is diversification. And CFS of the opinion, it should determine appropriate discount rate on an initial assumption that project will be all equity financed. Okay. Then uh, it was that uh, Laiu company would be a competitor to ZG. It manufactures environmental friendly motor scooters, which you are willing to make as well as wind farms. 60% of Laius business is manufacturing and remaining 40% is wind farm, okay? Share capital was given, reserves was given, market value of equity and debt was given, equity beta was given for Laius company. San Venue company was involved in only wind farms, K40, 15.4%, 20% debt, 80% equity by market values, okay? Risk rate RF 4.8%, premium RM minus RF 8%, tax rate 20%, okay? Exhibit two ends. Now, third paragraph, exhibit three, Zichi expects new manufacturing environmental friendly motor scooters to last for four years. Initial immediate expenditure of 70 million and for after four years time that the project will be sold for 42 million. Revenues and cost details are as follows. First year revenue 10 million increased to 40 million year two and 20% each year. Cost 120% of revenue in first year, 80% second year and 40% in each of the final two years. Substantial initial working capital of 10 million will be required. Subsequently, working capital of 15% will be required at the start of years two to four, and the remaining working capital will be released. ZG pays tax of 20% every year, taxes payable with a year's times delay. Any tax losses are set off against the company's profit. TAD is 15% uh, regular reducing balance basis, and plant and machinery will have a near risable value of 20 million. Whole project will have a scrap value of 42 million, but plant and machinery would have 20 million, and this is included in 42 million. Okay. Exhibit four. Due to positive environmental nature, ZG can obtain the entire funding through a loan at a subsidized rate of 180 basis points, 1.8% below the risk rate. That means you can get funds at 3%. At 1.8% below 4.8, so 3%. Normal borrowing rate is 6%. You can get it for 3%. ZG has decided projects should be funded through subsidized loan. Issue costs are 3% of gross finance. They are not reliable or tax deduction, okay? Given that new project is refunded by subsidized loans, ZG's CFO is of the opinion that APV would be more appropriate. However, he cannot explain why this should be the case. He wants APV, but uh, he's unsure why he should be saying this. Exhibit five, ZG's board is considering whether to raise funds either through a new debt finance or securitization. In addition, ZG receives rental income to some of its factory premises, which it has to other companies. Board is of the opinion it should securitize this rental income, okay? These are all the exhibits done. After all these exhibits, if you remember, there were five requirements. Requirement one was discuss and justify the actions ZG should take to address the three financial strategy policy failures, okay? So we did that part in the last session that uh, justify actions ZG should take to address the three policy failures. There were three policy failures, no post-completion audit. So we said that this policy failure needed an action. It should be post-completion audit, justify action because no post-completion audit, no accountability fixing, etc. Another policy failure using a fixed discount rate of 10%. So use a specific discount rate for each project. Justify. Every project has carried different risk. If you use the same discount rate, high risk projects should have high rates. If you use the same rate, even to high risk projects, you use the less rate. The NPV is artificially high. For low risk projects, the rates should be low. If you're still using high rate, the NPV would be low. This was the done discussion. And then it was the case that uh, the third policy failure, equity finance, it should be a mixture of equity and debt because equity is expensive and et cetera, et cetera. 
Second part, we needed to prepare a report to the board of directors. Now, remember, you need to gain professional marks as well. Therefore, report must have a standardized format. Two from date, subject, introduction, remember? And once you get two from date, subject, introduction, once you get two from date, subject, introduction, two board of directors from, if post is mentioned, finals, leave it. Date, leave it, DDM and YWS. Subject, Zichi project or diversification project, et cetera. Introduction, this report write the first requirement. It then second requirement, it then third requirement, it then fourth requirement, okay? Every requirement should then carry a heading. If that calculation, if that requirement is a calculation requirement, appendix one shows this, appendix two shows this, appendix three shows this. But if that's a theory requirement, write in the main report, okay? So we saw that the first requirement that estimate the appropriate discount rate was the calculation requirement. So we said appendix one shows the discount rate and uh, this is assumed to be 12%, okay? Remember we found it as 12%, okay? Now the second heading estimates the NPV. So NPV is also a calculation requirement. So we mentioned appendix two shows NPV, which is found to be this. Assuming it is all equity financed, that means again, it's the APV thing. And in APV while computing NPV, remember the discount rate we use is K. In normal case, the discount rate we use is VAC, but project is all equity finance is the assumption of APV. And when using APV assumption, the NPV's discount factor is not VAC, it's K. So appendix two, two shows NPV. So we need to make an appendix two, and then it estimates the adjusted present value. So adjusted present value is also a calculation requirement. So appendix three shows APV, which is found to be this. And we have to work appendix three as well, okay? So now we will be going towards appendix two. So remember, this was uh, all the stuff that uh, we wrote the answer here. And this answer you needed to record on most likely on Word software in the exam because uh, writing is on Word. Then it's two board of directors from date, subject, introduction, this report, first requirement, second requirement, third requirement. Every requirement has a heading. And if it's a calculation requirement, appendix reference discussion right here. So estimation of discount rate. Appendix one shows the estimation of discount rate, which is found to be 12%. Okay. Estimation of NPV, second requirement. Appendix two shows the estimation of NPV, which is found to be, we will just find an estimation of APV. Appendix three shows APV, which is found to be. But fourth requirement, evaluation of project and assumptions. And whether APV is better than NPV, this is discussion right there. So appendix one heading in the end, it found the K, all equity finance to be 12%. Remember how did we find K? RF plus RM minus RF beta asset. But we needed a beta asset for motor scooters only. We had beta equity of a competitor. So we ungeared it to get beta asset, but that was for both scooters and wind farms. So we put that beta asset, we needed for scooters, so we needed for wind farms. How to get for wind farms? The beta equity for wind farms was given, San Venue Company, we got a beta asset and then we, got deduction 60 40 ratio to get beta set of motor scooter okay now we'll move towards appendix 2 that is finding npv of project Okay, as far as finding the NPV of project is concerned, I think the information of NPV is uh, solely present in I think exhibit three. See exhibit two information was related to VAC. NPV's information was only present in exhibit three. So we will use exhibit three here. So ZG expects the new project manufacturing environmental twenty motor scooters to last for four years. Life is four years. Project will require a major expenditure of 70 million. 
After the project ends its four year time, scrap value would be for 2 million, following estimates of cost and revenues. First year revenue 10 million increased to 40 million year two, and in the final two years, revenue will grow by 20% each year. Costs are 120% of revenue in first year, 80% second year, and 40% final two years. Okay. Substantial initial working capital of 10 million will be required at the start of year one. Working capital of 15% of revenue will be required at the start of years two to four. Any remaining working capital will be released. Pays tax of 20% every year. Taxes payable with a year's delay. Tax losses are set off against profits. TAD, capital allowances are uh, 15% reducing balance. And the plant and machinery has a realizable value of 20 million. Okay. So I think uh, all the information regarding uh, NPV is given here. So if you remember, and specifically the students who have uh, studied from me or taken my classes, okay? Remember when uh, we were, calculating NPV, the first thing which I told you all was to make a capital allowance schedule. Remember, the first thing was capital allowance schedule. Now, capital allowance schedule was made like this, that we make three columns year, then capital allowance and then tax savings at whatever the tax rate is. I think it's 20%. So first we have to make a capital allowance schedule. It's a four year life. So the schedule will go to one, two, three, four. And it's a 15% straight a reducing balance. So for the first year, it's gonna be 70,000 or you can take in millions into 15%. Okay, 10,500, okay. Then the net book value that remains is 70,000 cost minus 10,500 depreciation. So this is the net book value. In year two, the net book value 59,500 counts to 15%, 8,925. That the net book value, 59,500 minus 8,925. In year three, it's 50575 into 15% reducing balance, 7586.25. And in year four, the net book value is 50575 minus 7586.25. This is the net book value. Okay. Since this is the last year, since this is the last year, year four is the last year. So all net book values should be charged in the last year because you don't have any other option to charge depreciation further. In year one, you did 70 million into 15%. In year two, 59.5 million, the net book value into 15%. In year three, net book value 50575 into 15%. Year four, net book value is 50575 minus 7526. This is the net book value. All net book value remaining should be charged to this year, last year. Okay. But this is the last year. All net book value should be charged for this year. But in the last year, there is an inflow as well, scrap value. So plant and machinery scrap value is 20,000. We will adjust that. And whatever the leftover figure will be. Two to nine double eight. We will charge it last year. Okay. So this is the depreciation. Net book value into percentage, net book value into percentage. In the last year, find the net book value like this, 50575 minus the depreciation. Whatever net book value is left, charge to last year, but excluding scrap value. Okay. And uh, let me see the tax rates here. It's 20% uh, uh, with the times delay. 
So year one tax saving would come in year two. That is 10,500. T98 into 20%. Okay. Then D99, 8925 into 20%. Then D100 into 20% next year, and then D101 into 20% next year. Okay. This is the capital launch schedule, which we have to make first. Okay. And uh, these savings, which we have mentioned, we will treat these savings as inflows. Okay. If you want to copy this copy capital launch schedule, you can copy this. Okay, so once we make a capital allowance schedule, we should uh, next move towards NPV calculations. And in NPV, it's a four year life, right? Zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay. So zero, one, two, three, and four, okay? As you all know, 
in NPV calculation, the first thing is investment. Investment is at year zero. How much? Negative 70,000. Okay. If you want to do in millions, it's your choice, but I'm doing in thousands. So investment is 7 million. Okay. Investment is 70 million and uh, the scrap value will be 42 million. So I will record it later. So I will record uh, the scrap value of 42 million later, following estimates of revenues and costs. Revenue is 10 million first year, 40 million year two, and in final two years, 20% each year. So remember specifically those who have studied to me, I'm sorry, I'm mentioning them again and again because uh, they know these things, that after investment, we used to record revenue. So 10 million, 10,000 in year one, 40 million, 40,000 year two, and then 20% in each of the last two years. So 40,000 increasing by 20%, 48,000, and this also increasing by 20%. 57,600, okay? These are the informations regarding revenue. Okay, after the information of revenue, we go on costs. It's 120% of revenue in first year, 80% second year, 40% of revenue for each of the final two years. So in the first year, it's 120% of revenue. So after revenue costs come, 120% of revenue. So 10,000 into 120%, 12,000 cost should be treated as negative. Eighty percent of revenue second year and forty percent final two years. Eighty percent second year. So forty thousand. Eighty percent second year, and then forty percent last two years. Costs are negative. Okay, now once uh, revenue and costs are deducted, taxable profits. Once uh, revenue and costs are deducted, you get taxable profits, okay? So it's negative 70,000. And you can sum them. First rich loss coming. Okay, on these taxable profits we pay tax at 20%. Okay, in year zero, no profits, no tax, okay. In year one, 2000 is a, a negative loss, okay. So 20%, you don't have to pay tax, you will get back, okay. So there are multiple assumptions in the exam, okay. So what you can do is that either you can write because uh, what the question states, The question stated that tax is payable with a one year's time delay. 
and any tax losses from the project are set against the company's profit from other projects. This is not the losses carried forward. Any tax losses are carried forward. It's not written. They are set off against company's profits. Okay, they will be set off against company's profits from other projects. Okay, so if it would have been written that uh, losses are carried forward, okay, I would have just adjusted this 2000 loss in the first year against future profits of 8,000 in the second year. So adjusted of the second year would have been 6,000 and then I would have paid 20% tax. Remember losses carried forward, but here losses are not carried forward. They are adjusted against other projects. So do a normal thing like 2000 loss. If it's profit 20% tax for in next year, but if it's a loss, so 2000 adjust the loss 20% 400, you will get us inflow. Okay. In the next year, year two, 8,000 is the profit you will pick because taxes in arrears. So negative 8,000 into how much? 20%, 1,600 pay tax. In year three, 28,800 is the profit. You pay 20% tax next year. And year four tax will be paid in year five. Okay, the three, four, five, six, zero profit. Twenty percent pain year five. Okay, the thing is that if there would have been a case of losses carried forward, so I would have adjusted the two thousand loss against future profits of eight thousand next year. Okay, but uh, since the losses are not being carried forward, they are adjusted against other projects. So two thousand profit pay twenty percent tax four hundred. Two thousand loss get tax back. Okay, now after tax working, there is an issue of working capital investment and working capital recovery okay any working capital is recovered in the last year and we have to deal with working capital investment as well pay attention please regarding working capital investment now if you talk about working capital investment because this is my format, investment, then revenues, then cost, to that taxable profit tax, its losses carried forward, adjusted against future profits, else is the profits tax, loss tax, get back. Then after tax, there is working capital. So now we are done with the investment. We are done with revenues. We are done with costs. We are done with taxable profit and tax. We are done with TAD. Okay. Okay. So working capital investment recovery is working capital of 10 million will be required at the start of year one. So in start of year one, 10 million, and then subsequently working capital of 15% of revenue for that year will be required at the start of year two to four. We all know our paper is uh, three days uh, more to go. So we all know that uh, working capital of 10 million will be required at the start of year one. So start of year one means you need to put it in zero. And then 15% of revenue for that year will be required at the start of year two to four. So the start of year two to four, you need 15% of uh, revenue. Any working capital will be released. So at the start of year one, you need 10 million. So the start of year one means at the end of year zero, you need 10 million. So invest 10 million in working capital. Okay. And subsequently, you need 15% of revenue. So in year one, what is the 15% of revenue? 15% of revenue is Okay, substantial working capital of 10 million will be required at the start of year one. Subsequently, working capital of 15% of revenue will be required at the start of year two to four. 
this 10 million working capital was required at the start of year one. Okay, so we recorded in zero. It was required at the start of year one, 10 million. So we recorded in zero. And subsequently in two to four, 15% of revenue. So 15% of revenue means start of year two, 15% of 40,000 year two revenue. Then 15% of year three revenue, 48,000. And then 15% of year four revenue, 57,600. This is the working capital required at the start of the year. One, 10,000, you put it in zero. But in year two to four, it was 15% of revenue of each year. So 40,000, 15%, then 40,000, 15%, then 57,600, 15%. Okay. Now, this working capital of 10,000 was required at the start of year one. So we put it in zero. Now this is required at the start of year two, 6,000. So at the start of year two, 6,000 is required. We will record it in year one. We need 6,000. At the start of year two means end of year one, we need 6,000. We have already put 10,000. We need 6,000. What will we do? We will pull back 4,000. Because if uh, after 10,000, you need 16,000, you need to inject 6,000 more. But you have already invested 10,000 at the start of year one, zero, 10,000. At the start of year two means end of year one, you need 6,000. You have already invested 10,000, pull back 4,000. Okay. Now at the start of year three, you need 7,200. The start of year three means at the end of year two here. At the start of year three means end of year two, you need 7,200. How much you have got? 10,000 invested, 4,000 pull back. You still have 6,000, but you need 7,200. So you have 6,000, you need 7,200. What will you do? Invest 1,200 more. Okay. And at the start of year four, you need 8,640. At the start of year four means end of year three, you need 8,640. Here, at the start of year four, that means end of year three, you need 8,640. How much do you have? You had 10,000 invested. Pull back 4,000, so left with 6,000, then invested 1,200 more, 7,200. But now you need 8,640. You have 7,200, you need 8,640. What will you do? Inject 1,440 more, okay? All four years working capital is done, and now total it, negative 10,000, then 4,000 pull back, 6,000 left, then 1,200 invested, 7,200 still there, then 1,440 invested, 8,640 still there. So still 8,640 is left, whatever is left, we will all release it in the last year, okay? After working capital recovery, we have scrap value. The scrap value of plant and machinery is 20 million, but it's included in that 42 million of the price to which project will be sold. So 42,000 will be in flow. And after that, there is tax savings from capital allowance. So tax savings from capital allowances are these. That you are getting savings in year 2, 2100, 1785, 1517, 4597. All these savings are believed to be inflow. So there are no savings in year one, leave it. Savings in year two, 2100. Savings in year three, 1785. Savings in year four, 1517. And savings in year five. That's it. Nothing else is left. You have done all cash flows. Okay. See the question. You have done all cash flows. You have done investment. Then scrap value is done. Revenue is done. Costs are done. Working capital is done. Tax is done. Time delay is done. 20 million is done. Everything is done. So you just need to net them all to get net cash flows. Net cash flows need to be multiplied by discount factor. It should have been VAC, but it's all equity finance. That's an APV assumption. So we will use K 
Use the factors from the table given in the exam, 0 0.893, 797, 712, 636, 567, sorry, 1, 0 0.893, 0 0.797, 0 0.712, 0 0.636, 0.567. Net cash flows multiplied by discount factor will give you present values. It's H108, 107, sorry, into H108. Okay, and once you net them all, you get NPV, sum of H109 till M109. Okay, approximately negative thousand. Approximately negative thousand. Okay, so you can uh, copy the solution. It was, I think, worth uh, seven marks. Easy seven marks. Okay, you can copy the solution. If you have any questions with respect to this, you can ask, then we will continue this question. Okay, I just want to add one thing here that uh, there are many students who might be wondering that uh, after recording, please pay attention to the statement of mine. After recording investment revenue, 
what we should have done or sir should have done is that we should have deducted TAD, tax allowable depreciation, and then get taxable profits. Okay. And then we should have paid tax at 20%, and then we would have added back TAD. So why sir hasn't done this? Okay, because there are some people who only uh, study from the past paper answers, they don't have a tutor with them. So they might be wondering that why I didn't record investment and revenue, then deducted TAD, then taxable profits, then tax paid, and then add back TAD. So remember, there are two approaches. The basic purpose of TAD, tax allowable depreciation, is to reduce tax. The basic purpose of tax allowable depreciation is to reduce tax, right? So there are two ways. One way is this way, that after investment revenue and deducting costs, you deduct depreciation. So see the concept, when you reduce depreciation, your profits go down. And when your profits go down, the tax also goes down. Tax benefit, tax goes down. But since depreciation is a non-cash item, it shouldn't come in NPV calculations. So to remove this impact, you add it back. But your objective was over because tax fell down. Tax benefit was there because once you directed TAD, taxable profits went down, tax went down. And to remove the effect of TAD, you added back TAD. Okay. Tax went down. In this format, you don't show tax savings from capital allowances because you have already reduced tax. But there is an another format in which we don't take this TAD less and add back. We don't do anything about TAD. To reduce tax or to get tax benefit, we simply do this tax savings from capital allowances add back because when you, when you are adding tax savings, the tax burden is going down. When you are adding tax savings, you are adding a benefit. So adding a benefit means tax is going down. So the objective is achieved in both methods. Although both methods may produce a slightly different answer. Like as far as I remember, the official answer here is showing NPV is 900 negative, no problems. I'm getting 1000, 100 difference, okay? But uh, even some of my webinar videos, which are available on YouTube channels, and you people might have seen them as well. I have used that TAD approach, okay? So deduct TAD to reduce profits and reduce tax and that add back TAD to remove the depreciation impact. Or you have always got the other option. No TAD less or I just get the savings. Okay, so you're done with NPV and now you should go to the other part, other requirement. Which is of seven marks, sorry, NPV was nine marks. We have gained nine marks now, okay? Now it's a seven marks requirement that uh, find the APV of the project, okay? Now we need to find APV of the project and after APV, there are only theoretical requirements left. Okay, after APV, there are only theoretical requirements left. So let's start APV now. Now, if the question asks you APV, Appendix three, remember we mentioned for APV. Now, if you are talking about the appendix three in which we need to find APV. 
So you must remember the format of APV that first in APV, we get uh, a base case NPV. Then you record a heading present value of financing cash flows. So for base case NPV, the discount factor should be KE. So using the K discount factor, we have already found NPV as 1013 negative. Because in APV for the base case NPV, it's uh, discount factor K. So on the basis of K, we have already found it. In present value of financing cash flow, the discount factor here is KD. The discount factor here is KD. Present value of tax savings from interest payment. This is the first thing coming here. Then present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax. Then issue costs. then present value of tax savings from issue costs, okay? And any net gain from closure or any other cash flow, okay? So all this produces APV, right? So this is uh, firstly the format of APV that we need to write a base case NPV, then present value of financing cash flows, present value of tax savings from interest payments, present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax, issue costs, tax savings from issue costs, net gain from closure. I don't think there is any net gain from closure, so write zero. I don't think there is any net gain from closure, so write zero, okay? Now, if you go to the question, issue costs are 3% of gross finance required. So I have told you this multiple times in my classes that if issue costs are 3% of gross finance required, okay? So, what is the gross finance required? Go in year zero, see how much finance is required, it's 80,000. Go in year zero row column, how much of the finance required, it's 80,000. So 3% of the gross finance required doesn't mean you multiply by 3%, you should do like this, divided by 97% into 100%, okay? So this is the working of issue costs. I've written from the marker, you need to write uh, by typing. It's 80,000 divided by 97 into 100. Okay, 82474 is the gross finance required, okay? And then issue costs are three percent of the gross finance required. Don't multiply three percent by the finance required eighty thousand. Cross it up. Three percent issue cost. If you will uh, raise three percent of eighty thousand. Raise eighty thousand. Three percent issue cost gone. Your amount would be less. You won't be able to invest eighty thousand in your zero. So first gross it up and then 3% of gross finance required. That's H131. Two, four, seven, four. So see if you gross the finance that eight, two, four, seven, four is the gross finance raise. We will raise this finance and 3% is the due cost two, four, seven, four gone. You are still left with 80,000. Through that you can 
invest in the project. Okay. So, bun me your question. What about the working capital? That's why I've taken eighty thousand. Seventy thousand was the plant and machine investment, and ten thousand was the working capital. So, you needed eighty thousand at year zero. So, first gross it up, and then three percent of gross finance, two four seven four. This is the issue cost. It should be negative. Issue cost has to be paid. Present value of tax savings from issue cost should come, but the question clearly states issue costs are not allowable as tax deductible. So there won't be any tax benefit on issue cost. Else we would have taken a 20% benefit, but here issue costs are not allowable as tax deductible. So issue costs uh, tax benefit won't come. Okay, now since there is no net gain from closure, close, no tax benefit, issue cost, gross it up, and then we took 3%. Now, last two things are left, present value of tax savings from interest payments and present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax. Okay, so firstly, present value of tax savings from interest payments, I'm showing this in working too. In working too, I will show. present value of tax savings from interest payment. Now, as taught in the classes, this is uh, done in pieces. Present value of tax savings from interest payment. First, get the interest payment. To find present value of tax savings from interest payment, first get the interest payment, this. What is the interest payment? Loan, 80,000. At what rate you are paying interest? 3%, remember, subsidized, 1.8% less than our so interest payment every year is okay you got the interest payment then tax savings from interest payment so if you need to get tax savings from interest payment first you have the interest payment this portion tax savings from interest payment multiplied by tax rate. What is the interest payment? 2,400 tax savings from interest payment. What is the tax rate? 20%. So tax savings from interest payment would be in areas. Interest payment to tax benefit. Till year five. And lastly, You need present value of tax savings from interest payment. So you have the tax savings from interest payment. If you need present value of tax savings from interest payment, just multiply it with discount factor. That is KD, cost of debt. At what rate you are getting that? 3%. Okay, you have the tax savings from interest payment. That's what I taught in the classes that first make interest payment, then tax savings from interest payment multiplied by tax rate, then present value of tax savings multiplied by discount factors. So at 3%, what would be the factors?
So three percent factors are 0 0.971, 0 0.943. Then it's uh, 0 0.915, 0 888. Okay. So tax savings from interest payment, no tax savings into discount factor, nil. Then it's uh, C142 into C143. You add them all. Total present value of tax savings from interest payments is a sum of C144 till C148. Sorry. F148. One seven three two. Since tax savings is an inflow, so one seven three two should be recorded as an inflow. Okay. It was just uh, found in pieces that first get the interest payment, loan amount into interest rate, then tax savings from interest rate, just multiply by tax rate, then multiply by discount factor to get present value of tax savings from interest payments. Okay. And before copying one last thing, in the same manner, I will get the present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax. In the same manner, I will get the present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax, okay? But me, how is that possible? If subsidized loan amount is different, the subsidized loan benefit is only on the subsidized loan portion, not the whole portion. Okay. Now do this like this. To get the subsidized loan benefit after tax, first find the subsidized loan benefit here. subsidized loan benefit. So what is the subsidized loan benefit you are getting? Remember you took a loan of 80,000. Okay, you took a loan of 80,000. You were getting it at 6% normally. Your normal borrowing rate was 6%. But the government subsidized you at 3%. So what was the subsidized loan benefit? You received a benefit of 3%. That rather than getting at 6%, you got at 3%. So how much benefit you got? 3% on the loan amount. So subsidized loan benefit every year is going to be 2400. Understanding this point? Yes, you are right. You are right.
Okay, so you got the subsidized loan benefit that uh, rather than getting at 6%, you got it at 3%. So subsidized loan benefit is 3% of the amount, 2400. Then convert it into subsidized loan benefit after tax. So subsidized loan benefit after tax, just remove the tax impact, 20%. So make it 80%, but in areas, 2,400 into 80%. Okay, because one was a subsidized loan benefit and the other was subsidized loan benefit after tax. Okay, you just uh, made it after tax. It was not a tax benefit that you should multiply by tax rate, it was after tax, so remove the tax impact. And then finally, you need present value of a subsidized loan benefit after tax. So you have the subsidized loan benefit after tax. You need uh, present value just multiplied with discount factors. We have all the discount factors. Multiply it to get present value. There is no subsidized loan benefit, so zero. But 1920, that is cell number I138 into I139. And then sum it to get the total present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax. Six, nine, two, nine. This is the present value of subsidized loan benefit after tax. Write it here, present value of subsidized loan benefit after taxes and inflow, 6,2,6,9,2,9. And once you net them all, base case NPV negative, B127, till you got to B133, net them all. APV is 5173, positive, okay? Okay, you see in the examiner answer, we are getting this answer as uh, 4,900 examiner answer, and we are getting as 5,100, okay? When you will use the examiner answer, he clearly mentioned that the discount rate he has used is 6%, okay? And I use 3%, no problem. KD is 3%, you can use 6%, the normal cost of borrowing. It also mentioned, Risk free rate of 4.8% can also be used. Whatever you are using, just mention it. You will get almost close a, uh, APV. So 5173 is the APV. Okay. So any questions on this, you can ask. Else copy so that our calculation stuff is over.
okay now the fourth requirement is uh, evaluates whether the new project should be undertaken maybe one mark whether new project should be undertaken discusses the assumptions maybe you write three or four assumptions to get three four marks so you get four or five marks and discusses whether APV would be more appropriate than NPV. So whether APV is more appropriate than NPV, yes, it is. Why? Advantages of APV that are taught to you in the lecture or in the study text, you write three, four advantages, four to five marks. So this 10 marks is very easy. And then you get four professional marks. Okay. So whether new project should be undertaken. You can write for one mark that uh, NPV is negative. So it seems project is financially not viable. But when we consider the financial cash flows into consideration, uh, when we see the NPV, the project doesn't seem acceptable. It's uh, 1000 negative. But when financial effects uh, are taken into consideration in APV and NPV is adjusted, it becomes positive. So considering this project is seeming to be financially acceptable. Okay, one mark. Discusses the assumptions. Any assumptions you have made, you can write. And some assumptions will be in the question. So let's search the question. Okay, ZT is considering new project to manufacture environmental friendly motor scooters. There is a diversification into new area with no experience. ZT CFO is of the opinion that ZT should determine an appropriate discount rate for the project based on an initial assumption that project will be all equity financed. So you can write one assumption that the, we are assuming that project is all equity finance. One mark per assumption. You can assume, write the assumption that project will be all equity financed. Lie would be competitor information, share capital reserves, equity beta, sandwich involved in farms, risk free rate 4.8, tax rate 20%. Okay, no more assumptions here. So one mark here. Exhibit two. Four years expenditure of 70 million. Following estimates have been made. So no more assumptions I'm seeing here in all exhibits. So so whether it should be undertaken, so NPV is negative, it should not be undertaken, but uh, when you consider the financial effects into consideration, it should be considered because it's positive one mark assumptions assumptions search in the question one assumption is search in the question that it's all equity finance write the assumption which you have made assumption two we have assumed cost of debt to be three percent you did this in ungearing and regearing we assume that beta debt is zero you can write this assumption as well okay we assume that tax rates are constant throughout the life. One more assumption. So you write four assumptions, one mark for whether project is undertaken, four assumptions, you get three to four marks. Now, out of 10 marks, we have got uh, one mark and then three marks, for example, four marks. Six marks are left. And these six marks are discusses whether APV method should be more appropriate than NPV. So these are just the advantages of APV. Uh, they're written in the text as well that NPV method misses many important parts. Like when you are borrowing something, okay, you get a tax benefit on those borrowings, but NPV method fails to consider that, okay? When you are borrowing something, some finance, there are issue costs. NPV method ignores those issue costs, okay? 
If you are taking a subsidized loan, that's a benefit. NPV method ignores that benefit. So NPV is believed to be an incomplete solution because it misses the tax benefit. It misses the issue cost. It give, misses the subsidized benefit. So that means it's giving an unfair view. To get a fair view, we should consider all inflows and outflows, all benefits and expenses that is being considered by APV. APV considers many factors, risks, financing side effects, issue costs, tax benefit, all other cash flows which are ignored by NPV gives a more better solution. So you can just write the advantages of APV to gain those marks. And I think this 10 marks requirement was very easy and professional marks are available as well. And finally, compare and contrast whether ZG should raise future funding through debt finance or through securitization. First, you have to explain to them what is debt finance, what is securitization, one, one mark. Okay, so remember debt finance is any finance raised by issuing loan notes, we have to pay interest. And securitization, that collateral thing that you are getting income from SERP source, you put it as a collateral, raise further finance, split it into different tranches, tranche A, tranche B, tranche C, ranging from high risk to low risk. So first you have to describe what a securitization and debt finance is. And then it is asking whether it should raise future funding through debt or securitization. You can write some pros and cons of debt and you can write some pros and cons of securitization. Okay, you can write some uh, pros and cons of uh, debt and pros and cons of securitization. Okay, like if uh, you go for debt, if you go for debt, debt is believed to be cheaper because it doesn't have any legal costs. Okay, whereas securitization involves some financial institutions, so you sometimes have to bear legal costs. You can discuss the pros and cons it fit. Okay, and securitization is flexible. You can have in different tranches with different returns, but debt usually has a single return. Okay. For securitization, there must be a stream of income present, which you can use as a collateral, but for debt, there doesn't need to be any stream of income. So you see, I have mentioned you three points of these. That first explain what a debt is, what a securitization is. Okay. Then pros and cons of debt, pros and cons of securitization, that uh, securitization involves legal cost, debt doesn't involve. Securitization is only if you are having a rental stream of income, whereas uh, in uh, debt, it is no obligation. Securitization is flexible, different tranches, different returns, debt has a fixed return. So write pros and cons of these, and uh, that's it, okay? So we have completed this 50 mark question. That was question number one of uh, the September, December attempt, okay? And here we will end our class, okay?